I started out with some statements that I wanted people to check themselves with, and then I'll say why. The first one was, if you come across the word liberty and instantly equate that with Ron Paul Nutter, you might be a Rorschach Republican. If you see a picture of Chris Christie featured in an article and then immediately spew reasons why he shouldn't be president without reading the article, now I didn't say that that was it, that you should just get over the fact that he's going to be a presidential candidate. I said without reading the article, you might be a Rorschach Republican. If you encounter a Jon Stewart video that and, and you comment about how awful he is without reading the introductory paragraph of the poster, you might be a Rorschach Republican. If you see the words immigration reform and always translate that to amnesty, you might be a Rorschach Republican. And finally, if you saw the title of the post, Rorschach Republicans, and said, well, I'm a conservative or libertarian, not a Republican, so this doesn't apply to me, and you ignored it, you might be a Rorschach Republican. The deal, the story that goes behind this is that so often, once we're done with the refinery, we put together clips about everything that we've done, just about everything we talk to. This is going to be a clip-heavy show coming up next week. I'm just going to tell you people this has been a great discussion. But we put together many snippets for people who don't have two hours to commit, people who don't have the time to sit in front of a computer monitor and get everything. They can engage on one issue or you know one video a day, and it breaks it into bite-sized pieces for people so that they're not left out by virtue of not being able to be here live with us or watch two hours on their own. But when we do this, so often, we're, we're putting together a lead that goes with it in our shares. Here's what we're thinking about. Here's what we want you to consider. Here's an idea for you to think about. And JD will put a, a image, hopefully it's one that's eye-catching and an interesting Rush Limbaugh, <clears throat> and that will get people to pay attention to the link. Or we'll write a story um, on our blog post and we'll add an image that will uh, you know, attempt to draw people in. And so often, and this is to the embarrassment and shame of the entire rightward end of the spectrum when people do this. Click, not even click the link. Look at the share. See the image of Chris Christie. See the image of uh, you know, somebody else, Rand Paul, Ron Paul, whoever. It might be Marco Rubio, whatever. And immediately comment without making an effort even to read the content. And here's why this bothers me. One of the principles that I've developed over the years is that you can learn something from everybody. It may not be the thing to do, it might be the cautionary tale, but you can learn something from everybody. What did we learn about the video, say, that was Republicans or people? We learned that you don't use stock photos when there are real Republicans out there to do that with. That Nobody can figure out why, but we learned from that. And we learned how that could be turned against us. What did we learn from Mitt Romney's campaign or Chris Christie speaking here or Marco Rubio saying that? We should be asking ourselves, and here's why. If there is a tactic that's available from someone whom I find even abhorrent and they have something I need to win, I'm committed no matter how much I dislike them or am disgusted by them, to taking and co-opting that tactic or that strategy, not only in order to prevail in general, but so that I beat that philosophy. I beat that guy's thought process with, my, with his own tactics, if necessary. It's a major principle that you can learn from everyone. You may not like to, Jon Stewart may make your skin crawl, but there's something to be learned from everyone. And therefore, even though Chris Christie may be part of, a, of an article or a video that I want to share showing how to go after unions, which is something every candidate needs to be able to speak to, union talking points, and I'm making the point about Chris Christie and his union talking points so many times the thread devolves into, oh, Christie's a jerk, Christie's a fat ass, Christie's a whatever, 
And it's name calling and it's unproductive. And worse than that, JD pointed it out, I hadn't even thought about it. It's just plain rude. It is just plain if you don't engage with the content, just don't engage. Just please pass it by and wave as you go on to the next thread. Otherwise, all you're doing is emoting. You are emoting your politics. And there is no way that that is helpful at all. And it's like there's a compulsion to share. Uh, you know, if it's less important that I read and learn from other people and more important that I share my thoughts with them because I am a special snowflake and I'm, I've got all of this self-esteem that I've been raised with from day one because my parents wanted me to have good self-esteem and by God I have it and I'm gonna post selfies every day and I'm gonna share pictures of all this kind of stuff because I assume everybody's interested and I'm gonna comment on things I haven't even read or looked at because my thoughts about things and my feelings and because really it's not my thoughts that I'm sharing it's my feelings that I'm sharing and certainly you'll you'll share that selfie with everyone right um, my feelings must be shared because everyone needs an opportunity to admire my feelings and certainly they're going to validate my feelings and tell me that my feelings were appropriate. The deal is that there are voters who will get to this point in an election and say if only I knew the positions of the people on the ballot 